The 10 games that I'm going to be showing you in this video have a combined total of over $31,000. Make sure you watch all the way through to the end of the video, see if you remember any of these games, and maybe you have some chilling in your basement or closet that you forgot about. But before we jump into it, I wanted to mention a few things right here at the beginning. Number one, I do not just collect for the value. I am simply making this video because this is an interesting topic that a lot of people always have questions about and they always want to know. So I'm making this video because I know people want to watch it. If I only collected for value, I would not have gotten rid of my entire Sega Saturn and Sega CD collections to make room for more PS2 and Wii, for example. Also, I wanted to mention that rarity and value sometimes do go hand in hand, and the games I'm going to be showing today are pretty rare, but it doesn't mean that these are the rarest games that I own. These are just the most expensive that I have. So first up, we have Rampage 2 Universal Tour for the Nintendo 64. But this is not just the standard version of the game. This one comes in a big box and it comes with this plush keychain. There are three different keychains available for the different characters. And the normal copy of this game is pretty common. And uh, the there's a couple different versions, but this is the most expensive one that comes with that keychain plush. The plush itself is incredibly rare. I'm lucky to have two different ones in my collection out of the three total, and I'm hoping to track down the last one at some point, but that plush is what makes this so expensive. And I haven't been able to confirm this, but my copy here has a Walmart sticker on the front. It's got the original plastic on the box still. It is opened, obviously, but that Walmart sticker is very interesting because it was marked down to $29.99. And I'm not sure if anyone knows for sure, but this might have been a Walmart exclusive bundle. A lot of bundles of different games and stuff that would have an extra item included sometimes would be exclusive to a specific store. There's a lot of Target exclusive stuff, Kmart stuff, and this could be one of those. I can't verify it, but it might be why it's so rare and hard to find. The next game on the list in terms of value, and yes, I am going uh, from cheapest to most expensive, so the most expensive game will be last, is Jack Bros for the Virtual Boy. So the Virtual Boy was a, was a failure, right? So a lot of Virtual Boy games are just kind of hard to find anyway. This one just so happens to be the most rare, and it doesn't seem like it had any sort of limited release or anything like that. I think one of the reasons it maybe didn't sell very well is because it doesn't really need to be on the Virtual Boy. There isn't really anything 3D about it. The only thing is when you're playing the game, you can, you know, drop down to different levels and that's really it. Um, it's kind of hard to explain without, you know, seeing it, but it's not really 3D. The game is usually considered to be one of the better Virtual Boy games, probably because it doesn't utilize the 3D that much, but this game is incredibly hard to find and I was very, very lucky and fortunate enough to have an amazing girlfriend who bought this game for me. I believe it was for Christmas. It could have been birthday, but I'm pretty sure it was a Christmas. So shout out to Abby for picking that one up for me. Next up, we have another Nintendo 64 game and that is Stunt Racer. So this was a Blockbuster exclusive and it was exclusive also to North America. And generally any games that were Blockbuster exclusive tend to be on the more rare side because they weren't available for retail sale anywhere. You could only get these from Blockbuster. They're only available for rental until Blockbuster moved on and you know they were getting rid of the N64 stuff to make room for GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. And then you could purchase them pre-owned at that point. So getting a factory sealed copy of Stunt Racer is incredibly difficult as with any of the Blockbuster exclusives. But this game was supposed to have a more wide release. And unfortunately, Midway just didn't follow through for whatever reason, and so it was a Blockbuster exclusive rental. The game is considered to be very, very good. Uh, it's exactly what the title is. It's a racing game where you perform stunts and you unlock different cars and different characters and play on different tracks. So pretty fun game and definitely one to be on the lookout for. But if you didn't have a Blockbuster in your town back in the day, you probably didn't play this game. Next up is probably the actual rarest game that's kind of on the list here. So the price chart value that we're showing on screen maybe is not 100% accurate because this game never sells, but this is the Zombies Ate My Neighbors art variant box. So the cover art here is completely different from the standard release. Uh, the normal release of the game is a great game, but it's, it's not super rare. It's kind of one of the more common popular kind of titles, right? Um, I think of it kind of in line with like 
Contra 3 or something like that in terms of like popularity or value. Um, but the cover art version here, the variant is incredibly rare and it's kind of not clear like where it came from or why it exists or anything like that. I've done a lot of research. I've talked to other people that own the game. No one seems to really have a 100% definitive answer, but what we do know is that this particular box was printed in Mexico, not Japan. Typically, Majesco is a company that was uh, printing Super Nintendo games back in the day for like a second print run or something like that. They would print them in Mexico instead because it was a little bit cheaper and the boxes would be slightly different. They would have black and white manuals and then they would say, you know, made in Mexico, not made in Japan. This one doesn't really 100% fit into that because it has a regular manual and a regular cartridge. It doesn't have what you would assume would be like the Majesco versions of those. So it's only the box that says made in Mexico. Very weird, um, very, very rare, probably the rarest game that I own in my entire collection. But according to the values that we're using for this video, it's not the most expensive. Next up, we have another Super Nintendo game, and this is the rare instance in my collection where it's not complete in box. I try to only collect complete in box, meaning I want the cartridge, the, ma the manual, and the original packaging, the original box, the case, whatever it is. I try to get everything, right? But for this game, it never really came with a box. There is a piece of paper that originally came with it, which I do not have, but for now, I'm happy to have the Star Fox Super Weekend cartridge. If you guys do not know what this is, back in the early 90s, Nintendo was holding a Star Fox competition where people could enter and depending on the scores that you got, you could win a bunch of different stuff. You could win like, you know, a, a Star Fox jacket um, all the way up to like a trip somewhere. And this cartridge was made for that competition. So I imagine that some of them that are out there were actually used in the competitions, but also it was available for purchase directly through the Nintendo Power magazine for a brief period of time. According to an article on IGN, it's estimated that there are about 2000 copies that were made. Who knows exactly how many? I don't even know how IGN could confirm something like that, but it's very, very interesting. And competition cartridges like this are typically extremely expensive but because it was available for order through Nintendo Power, makes it a little bit easier to come by, but still a very, very rare piece to have in my Super Nintendo collection. Next up on the list is another Super Nintendo game, and that is Hagane The Final Conflict. This is another one that I was very fortunate enough to have an amazing girlfriend for because she bought this game for me as a gift. This game is incredibly rare, and I actually used to own this game in my previous collection when I lived in Florida. And when I sold my collection and I started over, this is one of the games I did not keep. I only I only ended up keeping, I think, my my sealed watermelon N64 controller. So I actually got rid of, you know, almost everything. And this is one of those games that when I originally got it, I got it for like a hundred bucks, complete in box, and I was so happy, and it was a great deal back then, obviously, much better deal for you know what it goes for now. But this is one of those games that I thought, I don't know if I will ever get this game again. I'm currently working on the full Super Nintendo library, so it was on the list to have to get anyway, but it's just so expensive and I'm really happy to have it back now. This one is rumored to maybe have also been a blockbuster exclusive game, but there's a lot of debate about that. No one can seem to agree whether it was or was not, but it seems like there maybe isn't any solid proof that it actually was. What we do know though, is that this was a very late release Super Nintendo game. And typically games that are released at the very end of a system's life cycle tend to be a little bit harder to find. They sell less copies because everyone has moved on to the newer game or the newer console. So Hagane is a very, very hard to find game. And I'm super glad to have this one marked off my list. The next game on the list is not really even a game, and that is Pokemon Box for the Nintendo GameCube in the big box. My copy here just so happens to be factory sealed, and this is where we're kind of getting into the games on the list where price charting is not really going to be super accurate. These games sell so few copies that you can't really take the average of the last five sold because that could be copies that sold years ago, and that's the case for this one. As a factory sealed copy, according to price charting, uh, the last one sold in 2023 and previous to that was 2020. So this game does not sell very often. I have actually received two offers that are much higher 
than what price charting says and i am actively trying to sell this game i don't really care about having it sealed if i can sell this sealed copy i will replace it with a complete copy we have it listed for 7,000 at our store and the highest offer I've received so far has been 5,500. So that's definitely a lot more than what price charting is saying it's worth. But either way, this game is incredibly rare and it's not even a game. This is basically a storage box for your Pokemon. There are some mini games I think that are kind of built in. And this particular version comes with a Game Boy Advance to GameCube link cable and a very special half clear blue, half clear red uh, Ruby and Sapphire memory card for the GameCube, which is super cool. And uh, yeah, there aren't that many big box games or special editions on GameCube, and this is by far the most expensive, although I don't think it's the most rare. There's a couple that I do not have in my collection yet. Maybe you'll see those in a future video. The next game on the list just so happens to be physically the largest one that I have to show you in this video, and that is the Hyrule Warriors Limited Edition for the Nintendo Wii U. I have an acrylic case on here that I got custom made for this thing because this is incredibly rare and very, very expensive. The value that you're seeing on screen is what price charting is currently saying it's worth, but in my opinion, that is not accurate at all. Out of the last three copies sold, according to price charting, the average would be about 4,300, but out of the last five copies, this is going back to 2022, Two of them sold for $5,000, and not a single one has sold in 2024 as of right now. So, who knows, but this game is super rare because it was limited to the Nintendo store in New York City. It was also actually available to some employees at the uh, Redmond uh, uh, Nintendo of America headquarters. Um, they have an employee store but 99% of the copies were available at the New York store, and uh, that's why it is super, super rare. There's also the Mario Kart 8 Limited Edition, which I always thought was just as rare, but it looks like more of those have been sold over time, and the price is much cheaper than it is for the Hyrule Warriors version. I am lucky to own both, so luckily I don't have to track them down because these games are incredibly hard to find. I've actually had two copies of the Mario Kart one and sold the other one to a friend. So never had another Hyrule Warriors one though. So definitely be on the lookout. And if you live in New York City, maybe check and see if Nintendo has any store exclusive things because they always tend to go up in value and are really hard to find in the future. Second to last, we have an NES game. And there are some extremely expensive NES games out there. Some of the most expensive video games ever are NES games. And I'm very fortunate to have this one, although I don't have anything that's crazy. I don't have stadium events or NWC, nothing like that. But I do have a complete in box copy of Little Samson. And this is kind of one of those like very popular rare games. Like everyone that collects retro video games kind of knows that Little Samson, Stadium Events, Flintstones, Dinosaur Peak, those are kind of like the cream of the crop when it comes to rare video games. And I'm super lucky to have this one here. I got this for, at the time, what was an okay price. It was pretty close to retail, but now it's gone up quite a bit, so I'm happy with that. This is actually a pretty fun little platformer game. And the reason this one is, is very expensive is kind of the same reason that Flintstones is expensive and a lot of the other games from the NES are expensive. It was just a very late release. By the time this game came out, the Super Nintendo system was already out and everyone had kind of moved on. Nobody was really thinking, oh, this game's gonna be rare in the future. You know, nobody was really collecting like we do now uh, back then. So very, very hard to find game and very glad that I got this knocked off the list. I probably will never have a complete NES collection, but Already having this one, I do have a pretty good start, and hopefully I can get, you know, most of them, probably minus stadium events. And before I show you guys the final game, the rarest and most expensive game in my collection, I want to give you guys some honorable mentions, because when I was first uh, doing the research and pulling games off the shelf to make this video, I realized that if I made this video 21 games instead of 10, then I would still be showing you guys games that are valued at over $1,000 each. So here's some that are very expensive, but they didn't quite make the list. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters for the Nintendo NES. Captain Commando for the Super Nintendo. Full disclosure, my copy here does not have an instruction manual yet. 
Stack Up for the Nintendo NES, one of the games that's used with Rob the Robot. I got this at a garage sale, surprisingly. It is missing the little styrofoam or plastic insert that holds all of the pieces, and it's also missing the extra set of hands for Rob. Mega Man 5 for the original Nintendo Game Boy. Sumo Fighter for the original Nintendo Game Boy. Mine, unfortunately, has a pretty big rip on this side of the box. Other than that, it is near mint. Donkey Kong 64 Gray, not for resale, demo cartridge. Panic Restaurant for the Nintendo NES. My copy here, unfortunately, right now is just the original box and instruction manual. I do not have a cartridge for this one yet. Castlevania Dracula X for the Super Nintendo. Super Bowling for the Nintendo 64. My copy does have the plastic on it here, but it's not sealed. It is cut open on the end. Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. This game comes in a big box, and instead of having a regular instruction manual, it comes with a full-sized strategy guide that has some scratch and sniff cards in the back. This game never came factory sealed. Rampage 2 Universal Tour t-shirt bundle for the Nintendo 64. The t-shirt is sealed to the back of the box. I don't really collect sealed or graded games, but this came graded when I bought it, and you can't really have it fully complete without it actually being sealed with this one. And now we are on to the final game for the video. This is the most expensive video game in my entire collection. And if you have watched my videos for a long time, or if you're familiar with my collection, you probably already know what it is, but it is Clay Fighter Sculptor's Cut for the Nintendo 64. This was a Blockbuster exclusive. It even says make it a Blockbuster fight right on the back here. And so just like all the other Blockbuster exclusive games, you couldn't purchase this outright back in the day. You had to wait until Blockbuster was getting rid of N64 games and then go buy it. Because of that, and because of the way that Blockbuster and other rental stores worked, the box and manual for this game are the rarest parts. There are cartridges out there, you can find them. Cartridge only, I think it goes for like $900 to $1,000 typically. But the manual itself is the rarest piece. And prices have seemed to come down a little bit over the last five years or so. This is actually the third complete copy of this game that I have owned. One of them we sold just last year in 2023 for $7,400. It is the private sale listed on price charting, the last one that sold in 2023. And uh, before that, when I had my first copy of the game, I sold it with my collection in 2014, and it was not worth anywhere near what it's worth now. This is a pretty fun game, and this is actually one that I had when I was a kid. I know that it seems crazy, and like, how could I, the you know, this big video game collector, have owned the rarest N64 game when I was a kid? I don't know, it just happened. My grandfather bought me this game. He lived on Vashon Island, which is up around Seattle somewhere, and there was a blockbuster that was very close to him, and he bought this game for me. And I remember opening it on Christmas Day, and... I think that my parents have a video of it somewhere. Um, my parents filmed like every third Christmas of my sister and I opening our gifts. So it's possible that it's filmed. I do not know. I will try to find it in the future because uh, it's going to be on a VHS tape. But I remember opening it and I remember that it had the original box. I don't remember if it ever had a manual and the box probably was immediately ripped open to get the game out and the box probably went in the trash with the Christmas wrapping paper, but I do remember having this game. The only difference really between this version of the game and Clay Fighter 63 and the third is that they added a couple, like a, like a new character or two, they added some new move sets and stuff like that, but for all intents and purposes, the original version of the game is almost the same, so you don't really need to get this one unless you are a big collector like myself. And I have the full North American N64 library, so of course I had to get Sculptor's Cut as well. I got really lucky with this particular copy here, and I bought this on eBay. I want to say it was probably 2016 or 2017, and it was $2,000. Obviously now goes for quite a bit more, so I'm really glad that I got it knocked off the list a little early on, uh, because it's just crazy expensive now and that one we sold for 7400 was in slightly worse condition than this obviously I compared the two together and kept the best copy for myself I actually made a video on the channel uh, going through 
my friend Sam's uh, N64 collection that we purchased from him and I compared all the games to mine and I was able to upgrade lots of boxes, lots of manual stuff like that. And this is one of them that I compared. So if you want to see that, definitely check it out. I also have a really, really old video on the Double Jump Video Games channel that's all about Sculptor's Cut, the rarity, the history and all of that. And I've been thinking about remaking that video for this channel in 2024. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that video get remade with more up-to-date information and just better quality overall. So that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments, do you own any of these games? And if you don't currently, did you have them when you were younger? Do you remember playing any of these games or seeing some of them at Blockbuster, anything like that? I'd love to hear from you guys in those comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.